All right, so I basically thought I was going to be done recording tonight. Then, you know, I, I looked on the forum and you've got 24 inch pythons. Come on. Over there asking, could this game have been won? And I'm like, you know what? I'll take a look. And like I said, I thought I, I, was, I recorded a couple of videos and trying to get them kicked out. So I can at least be covered for the next uh, day or two. So I thought I was done recording. I was like, okay, I'll just take, I'll take a look at it. I was like, okay, I'll watch the whole battle and, you know, just write up a, a little bit what I think could have happened. Did I think it was at all possible? And honestly, I didn't get too far into it before I went, you know what? Because he just ended up doing one thing I wouldn't have done, and I went, you know what? This might just get interesting. And it, it's this might get interesting enough. I should uh, put down the chips and salsa and uh, turn OBS back on and start looking really into it. Like I said, I didn't get really into it much, maybe even a minute. But I just had a sudden thought this might be interesting. Okay, now the tank itself here, we're in the AMX M451. I personally don't, I've never played the tank. I have near no experience with it. Only experience I ever had was being on the receiving end. So I just got to try to rely on my uh, general knowledge that I've gathered from the forums and uh, being shot and shooting at it. So, I mean, this is actually the armored French line, which seems weird. Also seems weird they didn't come uh, equipped with their own white flag, but that's neither here nor there. So, it's this one's actually armored. It's, uh, it's getting a little bit. So, as far as holding capability, it's pretty well good. It's got a cupola here and maybe a smaller one right here that can be pinned. Big one for sure. Uh, in the middle of a firefight, if you're aiming at that one, you're already giving up. <laughs> and upper plate, relatively decent. This thing actually has like a, a kind of like this middle plate that is, uh, if I recall right, this one's actually pretty thick. And there's like a lower plate and maybe a lower, lower plate that are get thinner. But it's relatively deep, well armored. Uh, the corner here, I believe it can be a weak spot. Although I'm pretty sure it's also trolled me a few times. Now, f from the front, the turret's relatively great. And I, I keep hearing the tier 9 is the best one in the line. The uh, tier 10 is a bit of a disappointment, probably because it's a lot like the tier 9, but uh, the whole shape is a little different, so the lower plate's even softer. So it's probably got a case of uh, E50M. If the tier 9 didn't exist, it would be great in and of itself, but tier 9 exists, which is exactly it, but a tier lower. So, like I said, we're going to just try and rely on some uh, general knowledge. Uh, I know this thing has an option of two different guns. Let's see what the hell we're packing here. Okay, we're packing 120 millimeter. We got 400 damage, 257 pen, and for gold, what are we packing? 315. Okay, I, I do feel pretty comfortable. With this kind of pen on a tier 9, this is a, it's probably right up there with the mouse right now. And uh, mouse ain't exactly a slouch. Now, I mean, in my experience playing most French tanks, uh, they have ground-seeking shells. But, I mean, can this match be won? This is supposed to be a really good game, and... He seemed 24 inch python seems to think uh, he did nothing wrong other than one obvious thing. But, like I said, I basically decided we'll go ahead and uh, take a closer look and I won't actually record what I may think. So, we're just going to go on our merry way over here doing everything I think you should do. For the most part, we need to send a large body of tanks down here to the uh, south and. Um, no more than five should ever really head up to the north here. Okay, it's all about trying to take control of this area here. 
be it going around the uh, far side here, on and around and dig them off, coming up and over, or just going straight at them. Ooh, we're carrying Binox. Ooh. Ooh, that is interesting, actually. Alright, I'm... I'm not really sure what the uh, stock view range is. You might be able to get all the way up there with uh, crew skills, but I am starting to suspect. Although, if you don't got a gun rammer and gun lane drive, not gun lane drive, a vertical stabilizer, you're probably doing it wrong. And we know one of them is Binox. So, this might be down to the crew. And I also suspect there may be optics going on. Or the crew is just right on the borderline of full view range. My money, I would have put in the uh, optics and just got rid of the fucking uh, binox. But again, each their own. Okay, now, right about here is about where I started having slightly different thoughts. Uh, we are top tier. We're ro relatively good in the hole down area and whatnot. And uh, we gotta, because we are top tier, we gotta try and influence the battle where the battle's gonna actually take place. <laughs> and again, we can argue about which part is uh, better, but for my money, we'll cut right and head up here and hug this uh, center rock right here and uh, shoot idiots as they try to climb. Okay, where where are we going? Uh, uh, uh. Okay, we are not going to fight for the center ridge, for the center hill. <clears throat> Interesting. Uh, it's kind of taking our uh, top tier away from where the fight's going to actually be, and unfortunately, it looks like we may be uh, relegating that to uh, our tier eights to try and deal with. Including the mutant over there, with his uh, somewhat weak pen. Alright, we finally have our first customer, T10. Gotta be careful. Gotta be careful getting too fixated on this, trying to shoot the guy on this corner. Because uh, right around here, there could be someone waiting up over around the corner here for, while you're trying to chase after the T10. But, okay, we're not falling for it. 24-inch pythons ain't falling for it. He's going to, he remembers he's got reasonable gun depression. And, uh, oh, look, there's the Iron Panther 2. Try not to give him a good shot on us. And, honestly, that Iron Panther 2 has got to be having a friggin' uh, nightmare. He's got, like, no gun depression. But, that being said, he may be able to go ahead and uh, pull it off. Should have gone for the hole. The... For me, the casemate is... I know there's a weak spot somewhere near the gun, other the casemate. I can never find it anymore. I found it, like, maybe twice. So, uh, the, the hole is just friggin' paper. If he, you could get his hole, he, you could pen him pretty much every time. <clears throat> and again, this was basically, like, the uh, one, th one mistake he kind of noted. Okay, what else we got there? We got the Emu 1 over there, and we got... Captain click, 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 click in the fucking FCM. Good, he's dead. He shut the hell up. I, I would just mute the guy or put him on the blacklist because, quite honestly, it is like they don't want me to talk. Oh, gotta be careful. Skrbinski. Turn, 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 turn. Turn the front armor. Okay, bit of a mistake. Uh, I get you got a bit fixated on getting around and achieving the goal of uh, outflanking him. So... I, I understand, and I probably would have just kept with the original plan, despite seeing the big, oh shit, you're about to lose the hit points. Saying that we just spotted the uh, SU. But this whole trying to back up, uh, yeah, it, we would have been too slow to actually back up in time. Uh, our best bet would have been to try and start squaring up the armor toward him. Get the first, get the turret pointed over there. Second, get the uh, whole front armor pointed at him. Because I'm pretty sure he just, if I look around, you know, he probably just slapped it right in. And this is pretty much a fairly flattish angle for the Skorpinski to go ahead and just pin. Well, he did hit the track, so 
All right. He's fired once. Let's go ahead and, uh, like I said, my money, square up the frontal armor to the uh, SU, just in case uh, he tries again. <clears throat> All right. Good, good, good. We're just going to try and hide out a bit. Wait till we're reloaded. Avoid the cliff and take down the emu. Alright, uh, kind of checking out the T10. May be able to squeak a shot in. Uh, up, oh, got too far up, too far up. Uh, fumbling around with this. Got his ass. Alright, even better, we got his track. Uh oh. Alright, what's going on here with this IS3? Oh yeah, we're, we're well safe right now. Our only problem is if we drive up too high, we can't uh, elevate the gun to shoot across. But yeah, we're pretty safe right here. Maybe you knew that. But we are losing pretty much wholesale right on the center hill itself. Why? Because uh, our top tier uh, heavy tanks are down here uh, playing with the food. Uh, they're not where the battle is actually taking place. It is more or less the big issue, which is why I try to work the center. I mean, the mutant had to back off at some point. He's getting overwhelmed and... IS-2-2 is just trying to hang on in his hole. Alright, IS-3, you're next. Oh, what did he hit? My, I suspect it may have went into the hole again. May have cut the front part of the track. You know? But it was also gold. Uh... I don't know why, but not all the uh, pen marks uh, show up. And why is this T10 not dead? Oh my god. You stupid fucking Bobjet. Kill the fucking T10 already. Alright, let's give him a hand. Good, we finally went and completed the uh, Bobjet's fucking job. If I was that Bobjack, I wouldn't I wouldn't go over there and mess with the IS-3. Uh, mostly because that guy, the uh, Object uh, 257 over there, I believe can't its whole side armor can be overmatched by 122mm guns. So, I mean, I wouldn't go over there and fuck with him. <clears throat> Not after that ass whooping he took from the T-10, because he was too stupid to fucking kill him. Okay, it looks like uh, the enemy may be slowly peeling off this hill. But I'm like, this is where we should have been earlier. Okay, that's my opinion. Now, now it's going to be a little bit hard. I could almost go ahead and make the argument you may have, sh you probably should have stayed back where you were now. Now, especially now that the enemy's peeling back probably to, uh, go and engage the T-69 as he's moving around, but, I mean. Here's where we are. We'll just deal with uh, whatever the hell we got here. <clears throat> Obviously, worry that there still might be a scorpion chilling there. I mean, it's kind of clear he's already fucked off by now. Well, let's get up over here and start dealing with that IS-3. Uh, and, uh, I mean, we gotta be aware of, uh, possible shots coming from over here by another Skorpinski or the Scorpion himself. But, I mean, we gotta clear this guy out. He's, he is a problem. Okay, we gonna shoot him? There we go. Now, it's pretty good we got all the way over here. I mean, I may have tried going extra wide, my, myself personally, just to, uh, limit my exposure to that, uh, camper corner over there. But, I mean, we pulled all the way forward until we could actually get the gun down and uh, get in cover. So, good stuff. <clears throat> is this winnable? Ugh. Honestly, that's, that is very quickly becoming harder and harder to say. Who the hell we got hiding out over there? Our Skorpinski is hiding out on the outskirts. I don't know. We gotta go ahead and start really cleaning these guys up. Quick. Can't let this guy live. That guy had to die. Friggin' auto-loading IS-3. 
Okay, next one, of course, is going to be the regular IS-3. Come on, and, and, goodbye. Okay, we're still holding good. I mean, of course, can't, can't this be a win? There's no accounting for what your dumbass teammates decide to do as well. Actually, what happened to our object? Oh, he must have hung out on the side there and got killed by them too. Okay, what do we got going on? Oh. I think we can still fight this area a bit, but we are, if we did, we may be coming into a crossfire. And I kind of, right now, I think we're better off staying with uh, what little teammates we have left. So we'll at least uh, double our chances of dealing with this guy. <clears throat> Didn't really have a shot, it was understandable. Just hold your fire until you get one. Good. Okay, I mean, he's going to be distracted by the mutant. Let's get in there. Okay. All right, good stuff. What was that, 50 TP dealt with? Was this winnable? You know, looking at it now, I am finding it incredibly hard to believe this wasn't a win. Okay. Okay. We still have an ISU. I'm, they're down to their last three fucking tanks. Uh, you still have most of your hit points. Mutant can still take a shot or two. Uh, ISU is still doing pretty good. Uh, Skorpinski, we don't know much about, but I assume he's doing relatively all right. Unless, of course, he suddenly gets gang banged. But, I mean, with that, our ISU is very dangerous to being uh, completely encircled. So, he may his days may be numbered. Oh, Skorpinski is, uh, might be getting pressed by the T-49. Nope. Let's see what we got. T-49's a one-shot. That's nice. <clears throat> okay, I mean, this is kind of a difficult decision. Do we press forward and help drive our ISU's ass out of the fire? Or should we go back to cap? Because clearly that's the uh, T-54 on the cap right now. Unless, you know, the Skorpinski somehow managed to uh, elude everyone. I don't know, they're pretty sneaky. Uh, we can see their cap, so I mean, you can make a good argument either way at this point. Uh, you know, classical wisdom says, go defend your base. And yeah, we may be coming to that same conclusion. <clears throat> How was this lost by Cap? Oh, Skorpinski, Skorpinski. Here we go again. This is going to hurt. Get gone online. Good. Repair that shit. Come on. It's like me. You start hearing all those uh, shells bouncing around there. Get that repair moving. Yeah, I think we might just get out capped. Good. Go and bounce it. Go and ram him just because we can. We should out reload him. Or we'll just ram him to death. <clears throat> you know, was this winnable? Um, in a technical sense, yes. But, I mean, at this point, you would have had to have needed to know the uh, T-54 wasn't going to help his teammates, but actually jump on the cap ahead of time. And that's kind of the only real fatal flaw. Uh, like I said, looking at it originally, uh, you kind of hit the crossroads and without the siren going off in instantly, it's uh, hard to say whether or not which direction you should have actually went. So, uh, like I said, it would have a little more forethought about everything, but now we're just going to sit here and uh, hope against hope that uh, our teammates are going to get the reset and I think we know the answer right now no they're not now the T49's on there and it's all all hope is gone <clears throat> so was it winnable uh, a bit it, it could have been won but there had to be one simple change and you, that would have been you had to turn back to cap ahead of time, knowing the T-489 was going to go and cap it. 
And once again, you could probably make an argument for going either direction at that point. You know, go pull the ISU's ass out of the fire and... Or make sure your cap is cured. So, like I said, there could have been an argument for either way. But that's all I got. Eh, it was a close one, man. Sorry. But later.